previously on The Bill. What have you done to that girl, eh? Nothing, absolutely nothing. What's your problem? Right now, you! Now, I have kept my mouth shut for years. You fix it! I didn't rape anyone. You did. So he's saying the girl was his date? Yeah, so she was drunk and he was trying to make sure she got home, all right? That's when you put a headlock on him. So is this girl pressing assault charges? Definitely. OK. All right. The first thing is, right, and I've had a word with Best and Stamp about this, I don't want Kerry Young or the rest of the relief hearing we've got her ex-boyfriend in a cell. We're assuming, Gav. Yeah. We've got him, Mickey. He's leaving. What? Chandler. He's got an interview board today. Some post in the sticks. The job's as good as in the bag. Well, that's what he says. Well, that's what the board will say. We both know he's a snake, Mickey. But he's a clever snake. He'll chalk his way into the job. It ain't over just because he's out of Sun Hill, Gov. Look, if we can do this without dragging the whole nick through the mire, then that's what we should do. Yeah, well, Sun Hill can stand a shake-up. It's had plenty of practice. Look, Mickey. The last thing I want is for Debbie McAllister to find out from an official inquiry that the father of her child is a rapist. Yeah? Gov, um, is this a good time to talk through the Martin Porter arrest? I'm not with you. Well, how do you want me to play it? Because I don't think we should go in there and uh, scare him with nasty words like serial killer just yet. I think we should Look, just play um, it. Uh, aren't you missing something here? I mean, if Porter's in the frame for these serial murders, then he goes straight to the major investigation team. I have agreed with Samantha Nixon to keep quiet about Porter's arrest. Do you think that's wise? What about Kerry? You tell her when the time's right. She needs to keep her mind on the job at the moment. I just think I'd want to know if it was my ex facing assault charges. Yeah, but if it comes to nothing and he's out in a few hours, why make anything of it? What if it doesn't come to nothing? What if he turns out to be the serial killer? What makes you so sure that Porter's a viable suspect? Because he's a duty solicitor who obviously spends a lot of time in the court system with access to court records and witnesses. And we've got three out of the four murders with some connection to the court. That's enough to put him in the frame. Yeah, but you could say that about hundreds of solicitors and clerks. Yeah, but none of them were arrested pushing a woman into the back of the car. No, the thing about Porter There's is... no question here. This is an MIT case. I expect any paperwork you have to be handed over to Duncan, OK? So what's is there a problem with that? Uh, no, Gav, no. Just you're assuming a lot. Well, it's just that I'm assuming that you think a new job in the country, place to live, all that wouldn't be such a bad thing. That's not the point. You're supposed to tell me these things. You're supposed to discuss them yeah, with okay, me. Yeah, OK, OK. I should have told you sooner, but it all happened pretty quickly. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just not used to thinking as a couple, that's all. Obviously, for the baby, it would be a better place to grow up in. Exactly. But it means giving up my job here. It just all seems so sudden. I'm just asking you to give it some thought, that is all. There's plenty to think about already. You relax. Look, everything's set for the big day. Look, I better be getting back. I've got to prepare for the interview board. It's going to be OK, isn't it? Everything's going to be fine, trust me. You're not getting cold feet, are you? Well, smile. It's a wedding, not a funeral. Come on, you can tell me. No, I promised Nixon I wouldn't say nothing. Well, the thing is, there's this guy that Kerry Young used to go out with, right? Do you mean Martin Porter, the fellow in the cell on the assault charge? How do you know about that? You know they think he might be the serial killer. The what? Who said that? The DC on the early turn, you know, the one with the lazy eye. So you mean everybody knows? Everybody except Kerry and Luke. Oh, a day to be here when she finds out. Mm. And they always say two can live as cheaply as one. Well, exactly, and if we do move in together, it's not as if we can't see our friends, is it? 
Sierra Oscar from 202. Well, separately, I mean. Off license on Brick Road. He's falling from the third over. Hang on a sec. arrest last night. Yeah, what about it? And according to this little piece of paper here, the arresting officer was Cass Rickman. And according to this little piece of paper here, the other witness to the assault was our good old friend Simon Kitson. And? Well, wake up. Either it's an amazing coincidence or one of my officers was out on the tiles last night with a journalist. We're looking at a very serious conflict of interest here. Look at your Who are you? You're not CID. Interview commenced at 1425. Officers present, DC Lennox and DC Ross. For the record, Martin Porter was arrested and held overnight. He was denied the right to return home. Mr. Porter. Well, I am a duty solicitor. If this gets out, I could lose my job. Martin Porter demanded, but was not given, in accordance with statute, a good reason why he was not released from custody and allowed home! Mr. Porter, you were detained in custody in a possible connection with a serious arrestable offence. Now, if you don't mind, I think we should begin. So there's no actual damage to the property, sir? Not for want of trying, though. Can't you arrest him and get him off the street? We'd usually just caution him if there hasn't been actual damage. Try and get him to go home if we can. That's what I pay my taxes for, is it? So you can tuck him up at home. He needs teaching a lesson. Get up. Hey, hey, careful. I know people. Important people. Well, that's good. Why don't you give one of them a call, eh? You have no idea what's going on, do you, mate? So you had two glasses of wine, and uh, you say that she had five or six? At least. You know as well as I do that if I was just some Joe Public, the CPS would throw this straight out. This is more serious than your career. I'd show them a solicitor in handcuffs and they'll rub their hands together and throw everything at me. Tell me what happened when you left the restaurant. I'm not going to let you push me into court on a who-gives-a-damn assault charge dreamed up by some drunken woman. It's not just one woman we're talking about here. You did some good work with the porter arrest last night. Thanks, Mum. But I'm worried I've got an officer on the relief who seems to be in a relationship with a member of the press. An officer who has access to sensitive information relating to a high-profile murder investigation. An investigation of the kind that attracts the press like bugs to a cesspit. Mom, you'd be right to worry if there was any danger of me passing on information to the journalist. So you can spot the conflict of interest here? Yes, Mom. Good. Because I am taking you off all duties that have got anything to do with it, all right? Now off you go. All sorted with cash, then? Oh, I think she understands where our priorities lie. Oh, I forgot to ask. How was the holiday? I didn't know Prague had that much sun this time of the year. Uh, the holiday was fine, yeah. Mm, I've always fancied a visit myself. You know, those coffee shops, trams. Oh, did you get to we see We didn't your... actually um, get to Prague. We, we found the area around Ibiza much more interesting. Into all that, is it your fellow girl? Well, it was a joint decision. Yeah? I never had you down as a party animal. No, well, I'm, I'm not exactly. But Carl is. Oh, interesting. How old is he? He's 24. What? <laughs> Nothing. I just had this mental image of your boyfriend. But I obviously got that really wrong. Sorry. <laughs> I 
Are you sure we have to tell Gilmore about us moving in together? I mean, it's a personal matter, isn't it? Well, it's a procedure thing. He's our sergeant. Yeah, but it's not definite, though, is it? I mean, we're still thinking about it. You do still think it's a good idea, don't you? Yeah, of course. You're really enjoying this, aren't you, Nick? Sweet revenge. I'm just doing my job, sir. It's like the next natural step. It's not like it's... Martin, I didn't realise you were... What's going on? What's happening? Kerry, can I have a word in the office, please? What's happening? Well, someone tell me what's going on. You got a minute, Debbie? If it releases me from these files, yes. So, is everything okay with the baby and everything? Fine. I don't sleep very much. I ache pretty much everywhere. I can't drink. I'm on reduced duties because of this bump. And I'm stuck here doing the paperwork most of the time. Apart from that, it's great. Right. Sorry, Gov. I'm a bit wound up today. What can I do for you? Well, I was just wondering if you got your maternity leave sorted. No, I need to speak to personnel about that. So you're staying then? Well, do me a favour and get your leave sorted. Because, to be honest, I don't think we could find the baby at desk. I don't think I'd agree to the wages. Hey. I don't get it. Pushing someone into a car, why would you do that? And the uh, woman in question is pressing charges. Well, there's got to be two sides to this. What's Martin saying? It's more than just an assault. What do you mean? MIT are interviewing him. What? Well, why would they... How's it going with Porter? Hmm. I've had more cooperative suspects. He's not talking. Yeah. Just not about the case. He's more worried about losing his job. <laughs> Displacement technique. You need to concentrate on breaking through that. Get him out of his comfort zone. Maybe you might want to sit in on this one. I think we could work really well together. Absolutely. What about Ross? No problem. I'll have a wee word with him. All right. See you later. Good luck. This is all wrong. Martin is not the serial killer. DC Lennox will want to talk to you later on. Martin will be able to account for his time on those murder dates. He must be able to. He will, won't he? Look, Kerry. I should talk to him. Can I talk to him? As an officer, you know you can't do that. If he tells me he's innocent, I'll be able to tell. I do know him well enough to know if he's telling me the truth. <sighs> DC Lennox is the one running the investigation. But we both know Martin. Forget the uniform. I'm asking you this as a friend. The job is more than just the uniform, Kerry. And you know that. It feels funny not telling anyone about the wedding tomorrow. Like who? Well, just people here. Well, like Jack Meadows, you mean? What is I supposed to mean? I saw your little chat in CID. What was that about? Yeah, well, at least my DCI. It's to do with work. Yeah, nothing's just work, sure. Jack. All ready for your interview? Yes, thanks for your concern. You must have acted pretty quick when you heard about the boss. It's funny you're making a sideways move, though. Yeah, well, we're not all as ambitious as you. Yeah, well, let's hope it all goes according to plan. Trust me, you'll be the first to know. Yeah, I was saying to Mickey just this morning, you know, the place works in the same without him. Yes, it's been an interesting time. I'll miss Sunhill, too. Oh, don't get me wrong. I didn't say we'd miss you. What is it with you two? Well, that's just Jack and his macho crap. What? We're getting married tomorrow. Are we going to start like this? Like what? Tom, what is going on? Nothing. Well, if you don't tell me, there'll be no wedding tomorrow. So you arranged the date through an agency? Yes. Acting D.I. Nixon has joined the interview at 15.55. You're going on a lot of blind dates. No, it wasn't my idea. Whose idea was it? Silla Black's. My therapist. What's the matter? Doesn't say anything about that. Periods of severe depression after a lifetime of failed relationships. Your therapist told you to go on the date? I think his exact words were... Put the past behind you, take a deep breath, and look forward into your future. And your idea to the end of a perfect day was to push this woman into the back of your car? I told you, she was drunk. She wanted to walk home. I said she shouldn't. I reminded her about the serial killer that you lot haven't caught yet. I told her I'd give her a lift, and she said no. But when a woman says no, what she really means Oh, come is... on! <sighs> it wasn't like that. 
She was drunk. Whose fault do you think it is? What? Your relationships with women all failed. Was that your fault or was it theirs? What are you asking? Do you think they treated you badly? No. Maybe. Some of them. How do you feel when you have to represent a woman in court who's obviously guilty? Does that make you angry? <clears throat> so? Jack Meadows thinks he's got something on me. If he decides he has, he's going to use it. Well, I don't get this. Either he has or he hasn't. It's complicated. It goes back 20 years to when I was at Hendon with a guy called Peter Marsden. Go on. There was a party when we graduated. Peter's sister came. It was the first time that we'd all met her. Something must have happened, because she was never the same after that night. Not long afterwards, she killed herself. <sighs> Peter was obviously very shocked. I tried to help him deal with it. Together, we tried to find out what happened. Then I discovered that she was raped. Oh, my God. I didn't tell Peter. I figured he grieved enough already. I didn't tell anyone. And what's this got to do with Jack Meadows? Meadows told Peter about the rape. It broke him up. Why? He knew something that happened all those years ago and he was digging around to find out what and then try and pin it on me. No, but why you? Because he's vindictive, ambitious and he wants me out of the way. So did he find out who raped the girl? No. It was a couple of leads, but it was 20 years ago and no one's talking. I still don't understand why Jack is so wound up. Because whatever I tell him, he's convinced that I'm the one covering everything up. That's the whole story. That's the whole story. Listen, maybe you I'm should. Fine. Just... You don't have to wrap me in cotton wool, Luke. Happy now? Look at this lot. Was it the same man? What do you think? Did you see which way he went? Out the door. All right, where do we stand with Martin Porter? Is he a contender? Well, he gets a few of my votes, Gov. What are you thinking, Samantha? I want to know more than what's in his file. Like what? Well, I think the perpetrator's a non-social, organised offender. Now, the man we're after is not in it for the glory or the publicity. But he might enjoy talking about the killings. Does Porter show an unusual interest in the murder investigation? Does he feel the net's closing in? If so, has he talked to anyone about changing his job or moving out of the area? Now, from the second crime scene onwards, there's a growing forensic awareness. Now, what I want to know is, how much access does Martin Porter have to forensic reports as part of his job? Or oh, this we can follow up on. But from where we stand right now, what's your opinion? Is he our man? Well, if we agree we're looking for a white male, with above average intelligence, with an evangelical mission to cleanse the streets of women, and who lives by the river, then it would appear Martin Port is a very good bet. Does he live by the river? No, Gov. Well, he doesn't now. But he used to. He moved house a few weeks ago. His last address is flat 7C, 25 St David Square. You can spit in the river from there. Hey, mate. What's going on? Fancy yourself as Ian Botham? 
You're going to arrest me this time. It's a plan, is it? You wouldn't understand. Oi. <laughs> hey, 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 there's no need for that, all right? Leave me. Hey, let's just calm down a bit, shall we? Stay. How's that? <clears throat> Oi! Oi! Oh. Oh. It's all right, mate. Come on. Oh. No, I'm just going to check your pockets, OK? Oh, no, listen. No, please, please listen. I, I know things. James Chandler. What's going on, James? Do you reckon he's any relation to the super? I'm his brother. I'm Tom Chandler's brother. Liz Chambers, Tina Pope, Miriam Ray. Liz Chambers, Tina Pope, Miriam Ray. I don't believe this. Shall we start at the beginning? This is what this whole day has been about. You're out of your mind. Liz Chambers, have you in the course of your work or elsewhere ever come into contact with someone of that name? Liz Chambers? No. I have never come into contact with anyone of that name. Can you tell me where you were on the evening of the 15th last month? I was with a friend. A girlfriend. A police officer by the name of Kerry Young. She'll confirm that. Kerry Young. Badge number SO202. Didn't you like the view from the window? You're really starting to annoy me, you know that. You moved house recently. Didn't you like looking at the river? I moved because it was nearer to work. Is it difficult for you, me being a woman? Why would it be? Man with a whole history of being let down by them. Surely you must see women in a different light. Hiya. Any developments? On what? Oh, come on. Brave PC and handsome friend make dramatic arrest. Well, unfortunately, Brave PC's boss found out that she was on a date with a newspaper journalist and decided there was a conflict of interest. What? I'm going to lose out on all that overtime. Why? Oh, because she's taking me off anything related to the murder inquiry. She can't do that. I said the last thing you wanted to do was use me as a source of information. Hey? Well, of course not. I don't just see you as a uniform, you know? You want me out the uniform, don't you? Simon. Sorry, what did you say? I said I'd hate to think that this meant you were losing interest. No, of course not. But listen, why don't we meet up later for a drink? Nah, forget it. I'm sure you can find another uniform we'll join you. Oh, come on, Cass, don't be like that. Well, that's no problem, for sure. Oh, that's it for me. Come on, come on. He's insisting that he's Chandler's brother. It's so marvellous. That's all we need. You don't know the half of it, mate. Hey, 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 come on. Somebody better tell Chandler, I suppose. Oh, Take it easy, Mickey. Guess what? What? Look like you made a 50 to 1 on the dogs. Two of the relief just brought in a drunk for criminal damage at an off licence. Oh, very commendable. So what's that got to do with anything? Well, the thing is, they're booking him in. Guess who it is? Chandler's brother, James, is in a right old state. We have nearly got him, Gov. I can smell it. We don't need to do this, Mickey. This is too good to pass up, isn't it? The way Luke Ashton tells it, the geese is practically begging to come in. He wanted to be arrested. We don't need it. Look me in the eye and tell me you're going to pass this up. You can't do it, can you? for making time for this. Oh, how's Kerry doing? DC Lennox is having a word with her. OK. Now, I know this is a pain, and the job's hard enough without having to bail out the senior staff. But we have a situation, and we have to deal with it. We have the superintendent's brother in a cell on criminal damage charges. Now, we don't want the world to read about this in the paper or for it to come to court. Agreed? So we need to get the owner of the awful licence to pull in his horns and settle for damages. Yeah, but what if he's determined to press charges? All you can do is present him with the options. There are ways to sell him on the idea of settling for out-of-court costs. 
I mean, how much damage are we talking about? I'd say about 500 quid max. OK. Then this is how we should play it. Martin Porter's sighting you as his alibi in one of the murder dates. OK. Well, um, give me the details and I'll check it out. This makes you a witness in the investigation. I'll have to interview you and get full details of your involvement with the suspect. Just do it by the book. I'll be fine. There's something else in there. He also says there's a history of depression. Since we split up? No, he says the depression is the result of a number of relationships that have gone wrong. Apparently he's been having therapy for a few years. Therapy? Did he not tell you about this? He's saying he was having therapy even before we got together. Oh, does it seem likely? <laughs> I don't know. You mean you're not sure? I mean, I'm starting to think I never knew him at all. How could he keep that from me all the time we were together? Well, does it ring true? I don't know. What else is there I don't know about him? That's what I'm trying to find out, Katie. Samantha? You don't have any idea where Mr Chalmers is, do you? Ah, uh, sorry, I'm leaving about a quarter of an hour ago. Oh. Have you tried his mobile? Oh, this is lovely. Is that about the alibi? Yeah. Listen, I just wanted to say I really appreciate all your work on this. No problem. Does DCR Ross feel the same way? You'd think you'd have to. You were pretty sharp in there. Mm. Listen, I think this investigation could really benefit from profiler input. It's what I'm trying to do. Maybe you could put a good word in for me. Yeah, no problem. So how about this drink? We could go through some of the points. OK. Yeah? Yeah. How about tonight? Great. OK. See you later. Getting me shortlisted. I appreciate it. Don't get the idea that I'm doing this as a favour. I am trying to get you out of a mess so that I can sleep at night instead of waiting for a call to say you've been pulled in. John's in the bag, then it's over. Relax. Relax? Well, maybe if you get your friend Meadows off my back, I'll think about it. Jack Meadows just talks big. He's got nothing. Trust me. Do I have a choice? Listen, you are free to screw up your career, but not mine. Better get going. Just play the interview game and don't do anything stupid. He'll be fine. Believe you me. If you mess this up, I will do everything possible to make you regret it. Tom Chandler? Yes, Gina, well, can you make it quick? Because I'm about to go in this meeting in five minutes. I think you'll want to hear about this now. Yeah, well, if you can give me the five-second version, I'd really appreciate it. The five-second version is that your brother James has been arrested on a criminal damages charge. He's what? He got drunk and trashed an off-licence with a cricket bat. Well, where is he now? He's here, in a cell. Well, get him out of there as soon as you can. There's also the question of costs. But, yeah, yeah, no, no, of course, I'll pay all the damages. Just get him away from Sunhill. He's not yet in a fit state to be released, sir. Well, as soon as the FME says he's sober. Right. Idiot. <clears throat> he says he'll pay the damages, but he wants us to get him off the premises as soon as. I don't see why this should be our problem to sort out. Well, he's the boss and we're prepared to do what we're told. But if you leave it with me, Gina, I'll sort it out. Oh, thanks, Jack. Much appreciated. Kerry, did you get a chance to check that date for me? Yeah, we did meet that night. So he was with you all evening? No. That's the thing. That was the night he had a go at Nick Klein. After that, he went AWOL for a couple of hours. He didn't turn up back here till about half nine. Are you sure about this? Yeah, I'm sure. I was really annoyed with him. We had a row about it and he said something about how he'd been out looking for me. 
So for about two hours, you can't account for his whereabouts, is that correct? Yeah. Thanks, I really appreciate this. Listen, Duncan, off the record. <laughs> is he our man? Off the record, Kerry, the way things stand, he's the best suspect I have at the moment. here for your personal effects. And, um, am I free to go? Do you know your way home from here? No. Yeah. Free to go, but in no fit state. Huh? Do you feel as rough as you look? Tell you what, you come with me. We'll sort you out. Get your coffee. Do you have to testify, or...? I said, can we drop it? All right, all right. Trying to get kid off to sleep up here. We need to speak to you, Owen. What for? I'm pressing charges against that nutter and he'll get what's coming to him. Yeah, well, that could be the right choice, but there are other options. Less complicated options, ones that might get you the same result. How do you mean? I've seen cases like this take ages to get to court. You know how slow things move. You saying I might not get the compensation? Well, yeah, eventually. But it could drag on for 18 months, maybe oh, more. All right, all right, look. You said something about other options? So, what was all that about? What are you doing here, James? I was arrested. Last time we met, I gave you my card, do you remember? Well, I told you you could call me any time you wanted to talk. You probably thought about ringing me. It's difficult, I understand. You want to finish what we started? You can't stop thinking about it. A few drinks seems to help. For a while. But it doesn't help anymore, does it? It just gets worse. The more you drink, the heavier it gets. And then you got your brother, Tom. Telling you to keep your mouth shut. Things are going to be fine, he keeps saying. But they're not fine, are they? Things get harder to handle every day, don't they? I understand you've been at um, Sun Hill for 14 months. Yes, sir. Which I realize may not seem like a long time to be moving on. Not at all, Mr. Chandler. The days of 20 years at the same desk are long gone. Perhaps you could tell us a little about your time at Sun Hill. Yes, of course, Mum. I saw myself at Sun Hill as the proverbial new broom. I I'm sure you're both aware of the unfortunate events which preceded my arrival there. Go on. Well, morale was at an all-time low, and there was an air of suspicion which hung around some of the longer-serving officers there. It was clear to me that my first task was to unite the team, and also to show clear leadership. Yeah. Draw a line in the sand. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, sir. I can help you work this out. No, 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 no. You, you don't know my brother the way I do. Look, I can take this weight off you. This thing you've been carrying around with you for the last 20 years. He was always the one to get away with it, you know. When we were kids. Do you want me to help you with this? He was never the one to get the blame. And is that how you wanted to carry on? He's not here. It's just you and me. I felt that just as I'd got things in some kind of good order, we had the terrible situation of the fire and the tragic loss of several of my best officers. Sun Hill doesn't seem blessed with the best of luck. Well, luck is not something any of us can or should rely upon, none. Quite. A successful candidate will have to make his own luck in a difficult job. Absolutely, sir. It must have been a difficult time. What do you feel are the qualities that got you through it, Mr. Chandler? Well, we all use whatever qualities are at our disposal. Don't we, Mum? Meaning what? Well, meaning I used the professionalism and hard work that have been at the core of my police career since my first day's training at Hendon, Mum. Uh, speaking of Hendon, I understand you share a little history with a former colleague of mine, a DCI. Oh, really, sir? Peter Marsden. Peter Marsden was a friend of Tom's. It was summer, 82. There was a party for the graduates at Hendon. 
Peter's sister Louise came to the party. She was very pretty. Tom was going out with Anne Merrick at the time. I was 17, I was doing my A-levels. I'd just come to see my big brother in his uniform. <laughs> I can see Anne now. She was really angry with Tom. She knew he was flirting with Louise. They had a row. And left the party early. Everybody's having a good time. I can remember Tom and Gordon and Dave all dancing with Louise. And then she isn't there anymore. None of them are. Peter's asking everyone, where's, where's, his, where's my sister? Obviously, we've all come a long way since Hendon. But as I was saying, uh, the circumstances in which I had to operate in Sun Hill and turn it around him were hardly easy. The superintendent's job is not supposed to be easy, Mr Chandler. No, we're running a station. Obviously, Mr Chandler, I've run several stations. Of course, Mum. Don't you approve of women in the upper tiers of the service? I don't think Mr Chandler was implying that, were you? Well, of course. Of course not. Can we move on, perhaps to some of your other achievements, do you think? Yes, certainly, sir. As I say, the situation was hardly ideal in the internal affairs investigation. Didn't do much to pull it together either. What investigation was that, Mr Chandler? I go to the halls of residence to try to find Tom. I'm pretty drunk by now. There are noises coming from a room on the corridor. I hear music, voices, lots of laughter, and I head towards the room. I try to open the door, it's not locked, but someone's leaning against it. I get angry. They're not letting me into the party. I rush at the door, finally it gives way. I look around for Tom, then I see Louise. She's being held on on the bed by two men Someone has their hand over her mouth and my brother Tom is on top of her. I will never forget the look on her face. She's looking directly at me. Then someone pulls me out of the room. And then, a month later... Louise Marsden kills herself. <laughs> now, obviously, it would be completely unprofessional of me to name names, but I can safely say that there are certain officers at Sun Hill who haven't been fully supportive of my methods. Uh, Mr Chandler... And there have been some people who have tried to damage my reputation, limit my chances of success, perhaps even at this board. Mr Chandler, I know a little of the history of Sun Hill. But I'm not sure where this is leading. Well, you're both experienced police officers. I'm sure you understand the politics of these things. Mr Chandler. And I'm sure you treat any rumours about my tenure at Sun Hill as... Rumours? Gossip. Office gossip. That's all it is. Then when my personal life gets dragged into this war against me, my integrity and my professionalism is called into question. And it's groundless. Completely groundless. All of it. That's how it happened. Tom Chandler raped Louise Marston. I need you to confirm the things you've told me. We need to make a statement. Will you do that with me? Yes. change things. We still want to move in together, don't we? The thing is, Luke, you know I almost married him. Water. So what are you saying? Just because of what he might have done, you can't trust me either. I don't want to do this now. Well, why not? You just want to make sure you don't want to wake up next to another psychopath, is that it? 
Uh, listen, I'm sorry. I, I you know didn't what? Let's mean just forget it, about right? the whole thing. Kerry. Five and a half thousand. What? The damage. Five and a half grand should cover it. Right. How much? Tom. Gordon. Yeah. I uh, think it went fine. Are you crazy? I've just spoken to the CC. He tells me you really blew it. You messed up. I was just trying to give them an accurate picture, that's all. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they recommend you for early retirement. You see, you're so quick to tell us to keep a lid on it, tough it out, play it cool. Have you any idea how many strings I had to pull to get you that interview? All you had to do was nod and act human, but no, you go in like a lunatic. We'll stop worried about your own reputation. No, you better start worrying about yours. You are on your own, sonny boy. Okay, now this is a statement written by me based on what you said here today. You could sign both pages. What have you got against my brother? Do you think he should get away with what he did? You know, I think sometimes I blame my brother for everything that's gone wrong with my life. How much of this is about justice then? Do you think? For you and for me. Well, doesn't this speak for itself? All I'm trying to do is get to the truth. Plain and simple as that. In this business, you soon learn that the truth is never plain or simple. The more I see of Uncle, the more I think he's our man. The I. Nixon seems to think so too. She's really good, isn't she? I suppose you'll be keeping her involved in the investigation. Well, the profiler certainly brings something pretty special to the party. Absolutely. So, can I tell her she's on the team? Well, the investigation needs a profiler. Mm -hmm. She should be really pleased to hear that, Gov. Which is why I've arranged for DS Chu to join us as of tomorrow. <laughs> Not Samantha Nixon. No, a profile I've worked with very successfully before. Are you sure about this? I mean, we can talk about it if you want. There's nothing to talk about. It's arranged. Five and a half thousand. I know Chandler said he'd cover the cost, but I'm not sure he's expecting that. Yeah, well, to be honest, I think the owner could tell there was something up and put up his price. Five and a half grand. Hope Chandler's got big pockets, eh? <laughs> uh, how is, um, Kerry? How's she handling all this Porto business? Not too good. You should take care of her, you know. It's worth the effort. Things are all right between you, apart from that. Oh, we had a... Oi, Luke! What's this five and a half thousand damages? Jack! You had a good day? Could have been worse. How was the interview? Yeah, great. I knocked him dead. They couldn't get enough of me. Performed well, eh? So when do you go? Well, I, I've been thinking about it and I've been weighing things up. Decide I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying at Sun Hill, right to the bitter end. Oh, well, that's interesting, because uh, we've got some of you that might change your mind for you. Really? You've been going through my dustbins again? You want to get a grip of yourself? Face it, you've run out of places to hide. It's over. You think you play a hard game, don't you? Well, I know something about you. I know how much you care for Debbie. And you won't do anything to break up the family. Family? What family? Fumble in the dark, she ends up pregnant. You got caught out, that's all. You don't give a damn about her or the kid. 
She obviously didn't give you the good news then. <laughs> We're getting married. So how badly do you want me? Bad enough to drag her down too? Because I don't think so. Tear up your statement, Jack. You're going to need it for confetti. Look, nothing for your drink tonight, then. No. As I sweep today, going on McAllister's baby. I reckon Chandler's the father. Yeah, right. You get good odds on that, mate. Anyone want another? Hiya. Oh, yeah. What are you doing here? Listen, can we have a word in private? I'm with me friends. Anything you've got to say is fine in front of them. Well, it's just I wanted to apologise. What for? Oh, for using me to get information. Yeah. I'm not using you. Well, that's what it feels like. Look, come on, of course I was interested in the serial killer case. I mean, I helped you arrest that porter bloke, didn't I? Word has it, he's a lawyer or something? Anyone want to see a drink? Any juicy details anyone can tell me about? Simon! What? Cass? Hey, do you know what, mate? Maybe you should go. What's it got to do with you? Well, she doesn't want you here. Ah, uh, you and Cass must go back a long way. You seem very close. Yeah, we know how it is. You work together every day, you get in some tight situations. That'll happen. Well, you know where to draw the line, right? What do you mean by that? Well, I'm just saying. She's not single. So why don't you get your hand off me? Before I break you. I tried to tell Ross that it should be you, but he wasn't having it. They're bringing another profiler on board? But I, I don't believe it. Well, who is it? I told you, I don't know. Duncan, who is it? Let me get you another drink. So. No, thanks. Where are you going? Good evening, Mrs. Chandler. Not till tomorrow, man. I take it you've got the job. Here's to us. Go on, one glass won't hurt. Come then. Tell me about the board. Yeah, it went pretty well. Basically, they took me to one side, told me the post was mine if I wanted it. Oh, that's great. You must have really impressed them. But I've been thinking about what you said. And I think you're right. About what? Well, I just can't assume that you can give up your job and start again with me. It's a lot for anyone to do. So I've decided not to take the job. It's more important you and I are together. Are you sure about this? Yeah. There's another thing. Don't be angry with me. I told someone else about the wedding. I'm not angry. Who should you tell? Jack Meadows. Jack? Yeah, we had a long conversation. It sort of slipped out. So does this mean everything's been sorted out between you two? Yes, yeah, all dead and buried. It's the only way it is to us. How'd you go, Buff? You get a down channel or what? James won't make a statement. You're joking. You pushed him, though, didn't you? I mean, you give it a good go. He clammed up. Well, you can try again, can't you? I tried everything I could, Mickey. It's over. Next on the bill. You stupid! I, I, I didn't have any choice! Did it make you feel better? Do you feel that justice has been done? Innocent people are going to get hurt if you don't tread carefully. Innocent people? Debbie McAllister! What happened to you? It's nothing. It's all right, let's go through. 